Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. It's the 17th of June. It's 2019, and I'm about to play a video for you that's about 25 minutes long. It's one of the big videos that YouTube and Google do not want you playing, but this channel has done an amazing job on this, and I think this information is pertinent. So if I were you, I would rip it and flip it, copy it and share it. I don't know what this dude talks about on his YouTube channel. I just discovered him through another channel called Many Fish. But once I watched this, I had to I had to re-up it. So you probably should too, because I would imagine it won't be around very much longer. But again, I digress. So as you saw the other day, a helicopter crashed into the top of a building in Manhattan while trying to make an emergency landing. And of course, every time this happens, and it's happened a lot over the last two years, it leads us to the now infamous Q post that states that 7 out of 10 plane crashes or helicopter crashes, whatever, are not accidents. But now we have this great post from Joe M. at The Storm Is Upon Us on Twitter. It says, things to know about the New York City helicopter crash. It collided with the top floor, which is owned by Sidley Austin, Obama's corrupt former Chicago-based law firm. The same firm who had floors 54 to 59 in the World Trade Center North Tower on 9-11, where not one of their 600 lawyers died. And of course, not their lawyers died. They're hooked up with the world government. And if you look here, what else do we know about 9-11? Marvin Bush, the head of Securicom, the company that did digital security for the towers, and his dad was George Bush Sr., who was hooked up to the CIA, which is one of their intelligence branches. You have the majority of the hijackers were Saudi nationalists. That links up to the House of Saud, most of whom had their visas approved by none other than John Brennan. But what about possible ties to the world government's other intelligence agencies? A little over a year before September 11th, an Israeli art group named Gelatin which is also coincidentally the name of high-powered explosives, began an ongoing project on the 91st floor of the World Trade Center to add a balcony to one of the floors. You can even see here in the Metro, which is a daily newspaper people hand out like the subways in the morning, Taven did a little write-up about it. You have a picture down here of them working with all these boxes stacked around them, talking about the group gelatin and working on their project, the B thing, which I suppose... According to them, is B for balcony, which I would suggest after these next few slides might stand for something else. Now, if you look a little closer at this picture, it says BB18 on it. Now, BB18 is a popular fuse housing for when you have a million wires and you need to organize them for something. I don't know how many wires you would need to put a balcony outside, but my guess would be zero. Now, one night while they were working on this, they went to a whole bunch of floors and put E team showing that they had access to all these floors, which is exactly where the first plane hit. They lit up floors 90 to 94, and the first plane, or the first explosion, happened on floors 93 to 99. After this was all done, they published a 62-page book about it, which is extremely hard to get, as you can imagine, which includes pictures of them doing it and all about it, and then some of their sketches. Now, keep in mind, these are supposed art students, okay? Now, I know art doesn't always mean drawing. It can mean many things, but nevertheless, these look like the scribbled-out blueprints of a heist or something shady. Here's one with the tower. It says, very depressing inside, very amazing outside. All right, that's weird. We want to break through to the amazement from the inside. Okay, like a bomb breaking out. And it says, depression inside, amazement outside. And here's the second sketch of a building basically starting to crumble with debris falling all around it. Now, this isn't shady at all, guys. Here's another sketch of someone jumping out of the Twin Towers. Here's a sketch, and there's a lot of them. The Creeper, I'm going to show a few of the towers and then all the lower levels behind it. On the top here, it says, God, bring airplane food. Right next to it, it says, last chance to open a parachute. If you go down here, it just says a whole bunch of creepy stuff. Highest worm population. All right, so this is a sketchbook, which shows a crumbling tower, and shows the towers here with a hole where their balcony supposedly is, but is where the plane hits. It says, bring airplane food. The only pictures of them are standing next to 100 fuse boxes that are used to rig up things like, uh, I don't know, bombs? Their name is Gelatin, 
which is a high-powered explosive and is called the B thing, working on the exact same floors where the first explosion hit. And here's one of the passengers on that first plane, Danny Lewin, pictured in front of what looks like two gray towers. Danny Lewin is a former Israeli Special Forces in the division which was in charge of counterterrorism beyond Israel's borders. Now, in this series of pictures, he's wearing a watch called the Hijacker. Danny was seated in row nine of Flight 11. Eugene, you're saying that you didn't see anything initially. You didn't see a plane actually approach the building. I had right? no idea it was a plane. I just, uh, I just saw the entire uh, top part of the World Trade Center explode. So when you uh, I turned on the TV when I heard they said it was a plane. Right. It was really strange. So you've probably heard me in past videos talk about math, and I do math all day long, and I'm a mathematician and all that. Well, that is because I... I'm a skyscraper engineer who has been building skyscrapers in Manhattan for 17 years. So I have to say, if there's ever been anything I've been more qualified to speak on, it's the collapse of the Twin Towers. Of course, this is just my personal assessment based on the things I know about skyscrapers and after studying that video over and over again and comparing it to other research I've done on the matter. Now, first things first, those buildings were tanks. I mean, those might have been the two sturdiest, strongest buildings on the planet. Now, majority of buildings get most of their strength from the core, around like the elevator shaft. That's where the heaviest steel will be, and it'll come up the middle of the building. And it creates like a spine. So this is where most of the strength from the building comes. Now, if you look at the Twin Towers, they were built like that, like every other building. They were also built with an exoskeleton of some of the heaviest steel in any building in the whole city. To make even anything other than a dent, let alone a hole that size in those buildings, you'd have to drive an aircraft carrier into them. A plane like that would just shred itself like paper. It would barely even enter the building. The majority of it would crumple and it would just fall down to the ground. I don't care how much jet fuel's on board. I don't care what. Look at this airplane being scrapped here. Look at this thing going through it like paper. They're nothing. They're little tin nothings, these planes. There is no way on earth that thing could blow a hole into the most solid building ever created. So now the second part is, let's say on some miraculous occurrence, it does blow that hole into the side. So now you got the top however many, what, 10 floors or whatever, about to fall onto the bottom 90. And this is everyone's favorite theory. It says it pancaked. Oh, the building just pancaked. It's a like cringe. Every time I hear that, first of all, that's not even what pancaking looks like. When floors pancake, the, the horrible occurrence that this is, they go, they stop. They go, floor, 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 floor. So you look at this video right here. If you can see briefly, there's a lot of smoke. It drops the floor and stops for a second. Then it drops again. So look at this one collapsing. It collapses a floor and it falls over. These are the two most common occurrences with a pancake. Either goes floor, stop, floor, stop, floor, stop, floor, stop, floor, stop, floor, stop, floor, stop. Floor, stop. Or it hits the floor and then falls over. The only thing that would have ever happened with those buildings, a steel building no less, when pancaking usually happens with a reinforced concrete building, not a steel building, in the first place. But the only thing that would have happened is that it would either the top would have dropped the floor, dropped the floor, dropped the floor, dropped the floor, and you would have seen it in a horribly slow fashion and eventually would have just hit the ground, or what would have most likely happened, it would have fell a floor and the whole top would have fell off onto the street. But neither of those things did happen, did it? No, it free fell. It's only one thing on earth that can make a building fall, free fall perfectly into its own footprint, and that's controlled demolition, period. It's not even up for debate. And then World Trade Center 7, which everyone wants to dismiss, meanwhile, this is a building that would be one of the tallest buildings, if not the tallest building in most of the states in America. It's like an afterthought. Didn't have a hole in it where the top floor could have pancaked. No, it, oh, it had fire. It had fire debris, supposedly, inside. The fires weakened it. And did it start to crumble from the fire? No. Did it fall over? No. Did it pancake? Obviously not. It also fell in free fall speed. 
perfectly into its footprint. I mean, how are we still even talking about this 18 years later? Furthermore, if you look in the seven, you can see this video where the squibs are popping out. It's exactly what happens in the controlled demolition. That's them. They they cut the inside beams and then they have bombs to go off one by one. And you can see them blowing out the windows of the building as they're exploding first, collapsing everything, and then it falls. Also, you have Silverstein in this interview saying that he gave the order to pull it, which is the only terminology for pull it is a control emulation. Okay, pull it, and then they hit the thing, and it collapses. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. So then you have this news station reporting it as collapsed already, so clearly they knew what was going on, when it's right behind her. <laughs> That's that's it. That's the Solomon Brothers building or World Trade Seven. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Solomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash. And we know that behind that, there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline. But now going back to the Twin Towers, you have these guys talking about bombs going off. Yeah, multiple bombs, two, three bombs going off, one after another. It's exactly what happens in a controlled demolition. You start from the bottom, it goes pop, 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 and then it just starts to fall. That's exactly what they're describing. That's exactly what many people were describing that day. People saying, nah, that was a bomb. People saying there was an explode, big explosion right before it collapsed. If you slow up the video here, you could see little puffs coming out of the windows. Exactly what happens is those things are blowing and separating the already cut I beam. Uh, in my office on the northwest corner of the 82nd floor, I heard a noise like a sonic boom almost, and then a blast. The building swayed, sh you know, uh, shook a little bit. I saw papers coming fly out of the middle of the building, and then we went to the staircase to try to get down. We were going down. We got stuck on one floor because the door and the staircase wouldn't even open. So we went back onto the floor uh, through some fire. We saw some fire and rubbish, and we went to the other staircase to come down. We made it all the way downstairs. And then when we were just about to come out of the building, uh, there was another blast. And all the lights went out, and that, this is what happened then. The glass came down? Uh, we didn't see we were still inside the building. All we heard was a big blast, and the whole volume of air moved. And we went, we came out through the uh, uh, subway. No second plane. It was a bomb. Bomb in the building, not second plane. That was a bomb. Right. Who said the second plane? That's what we're told, the second plane. No, we saw it on television. Saw everything. All right. Thanks a lot. And of course, they knew right away it was Muhammad Atta. They found his passport on the street. Oh, okay. So everything in the whole plane is incinerated to dust. Everything on the screen is a fireball the size of a giant stadium. <laughs> but his passport somehow survived. I mean, I mean, th they could have come up with something better than that? And of course, right away, oh, it was Osama bin Laden. Never mind the fact that known truther Bill Cooper said it was either June or July of 2001, that they're going to have a major event and blame it on Osama bin Laden. Never mind that he was curiously killed in his own driveway one month after 9-11. Never mind the fact that the FBI director at the time was Robert Mueller, who was appointed only one week before the attacks, who was the person who reported on weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, you know, all your leftist hero, Robert Mueller, who then did an investigation into it that went on for years and led nowhere. Surprise, surprise. But all that aside, right now, just talking about these buildings, the only things that I can add to the conversation is that a, those were the strongest buildings, two of the strongest buildings ever built. A plane would be like paper to them. It would never even penetrate it, let alone explode two full floors of it. That this is not even what a pancaking building looks like and would never fall like this. This building was an absolute tank. So in my personal opinion, these were absolutely rigged for demolition. I remember at the time, there was a, a, one of the big things that was going around here, which you could imagine, the volume of stories around here, it got to be 
1,500 times the amount of anywhere else in the country. And one of the ones that always stuck out in my mind were a lot of people who worked in the Trade Center were coming out and saying that they were like, as they were leaving at night, you know, people would be coming in and there was just times for months at a time where they'd always see these people as construction workers going up to work late at night or a lot of them, I think they were saying they looked like electricians or leckies or whatever that whole year leading up to that. And another thing, I don't know if anyone works in the city, well, Manhattan, I don't know about other cities, but there's always food carts on every corner. Everywhere you go, it don't matter. You can get a bagel on the corner in front of your job egg sandwich whatever there's always these food carts every single morning these breakfast carts that morning they were all gone they got the word that something was going to happen here you know larry silverstein canceled his meeting every morning he had a meeting at windows in the world oh but that day his wife made an appointment for him to go to the there was like the skin doctor or something yeah right okay that particular morning uh, because i have I call it hair and fair skin, and I'm um, a nudity to the dermatologist. Yeah. Uh, my wife, God bless her, had made an appointment for me uh, at the doctor. And I remember dressing to go to the doctor. I'm finally saying to my wife, I said, sweetheart, that I've got so much to do downtown. I've got to cancel this. I've got to go downtown. And she said, you're not going to cancel this appointment. You're going to the dermatologist. So he happened to miss that meeting that he went to every single morning on that particular morning. It had also come down just before he bought those that a whole bunch of asbestos had to be removed, which was an insane amount of money. It would have been impossible. He would have had to take the buildings down or shut them down or something. And here you have a FEMA worker being interviewed about the horrors that he's helping to clean up in the city. And he states that he arrived the night before 9-11. To be honest with you, uh, we arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning. And not until today did we get a full opportunity to work uh, uh, the entire site. So let's just think about this for a second. FEMA arrived in New York Monday night before the attack. This was 100% a planned attack. This guy's doing this interview on Wednesday, September 13th. He talks about arriving Monday night, goes through Tuesday, and then mentions Wednesday. So he didn't mess the days up. They were there tonight before ready for this event. What was happening in this classroom on the morning of September 11th? Well, they were having the whole class recite, Kite, Hit, Steal, Plane. Get ready. Kite. Yes, Kite. Get ready. Kite. Yes, Kite. Get ready. Steal. Yes, Kite. Get ready. Plane. Yes, Plane. Get ready. Must. Yes, Must. Go to your speaker reader up under your seat. Open your book up to lesson. Oh, there's George Bush. And there's him getting told that the country is under attack. Right after the class recites kite, hit, steal, plane. What happened right after September 11th? They signed the Patriot Act, giving away everyone's privacy. Fun fact, the Patriot Act was actually mostly drafted by Joe Biden in 1995. So quick recap, Joe Biden is the one who drafted the Patriot Act. John Brennan is the one who approved the visas for the supposed hijackers. And Robert Mueller is the FBI director who conducted an investigation into 9-11 that led nowhere. It's funny because all I ever hear about is the Bush connections. It's almost as if they're controlled by the same people. So what else happened on September 11th? Well, the day before, Donald Rumsfeld had announced that they were missing $2.3 trillion. Well, wouldn't you know it was the Budgets Analyst Office where they were, quote unquote, looking for this $2.3 trillion that exploded the next day. Or the flight that went down in Pennsylvania. You can see the crater right here. Well, there's the two wings. Well, what they don't tell you is that that crater was there already. The only thing that's new is the bomb hole in the middle. Finally, I'll leave you with Donald Trump's own words that day of the attack, followed by a montage of eyewitness accounts. And you could tell me whether or not this was caused by a plane crash or by planted bombs. Where we go one, we go all. Donald, you're probably the best known builder, uh, particularly of, of, of great buildings in the city. There's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused 
by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation. And it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole in the steel. And this is steel that was, you remember the, the width of the windows in the World Trade Center, folks. I think, you, you know, if you were ever up there, they were quite narrow. And in between was this heavy steel. I said, how could a plane, even a plane, even a 767 or 747 or whatever it might have been, how could it possibly go through the steel? I happen to think that they had not only a plane, but they had bombs that exploded almost simultaneously. Because I just can't imagine anything being able to go through that wall. As we were getting our gear on and making our way to the stairway, there was a uh, heavy-duty explosion. The whole building just collapsed on us inside the lobby. Was that a secondary explosion? Yes, it was. That was the planet problem? Yeah, definitely a secondary explosion. I heard a second explosion and another rumble. An hour later than that, we had that big explosion from much, much lower. It just went ba-boom. It was like a bomb went off. And another explosion came right from it. Just everyone flying. There were numerous secondary explosions taking place in that building. It was con there were continuous explosions. No, the first the first explosion, and there was a second explosion in the same building. Okay. There were two explosions. Okay. There. Federal agencies that were down there do believe that there was some sort of explosive device somewhere else besides the planes That's hitting. Right. Uh, there was a, another explosion that took place uh, in one of the towers here. Uh, so obviously, he, according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. There was a secondary explosion, probably a device either planted before or on the aircraft that did not explode until an hour later. Then there was some secondary explosions and then the subsequent collapses. That the FBI most likely thinks that there was a car or truck packed with explosives underneath the buildings, which also exploded at the same time time and brought both of them down. Now that's the first time we're hearing that. So two planes and explosives that were in the building, is that correct? That is the working theory at this point. I heard a noise like a sonic boom almost and then a blast. The building swayed, sh you know, uh, shook a little bit. I saw papers coming fly out of the middle of the building. When we were just about to come out of the building, uh, there was another blast. And all the lights went out, and that, this is what happened then. A huge explosion now It sounded like gunfire. You know, bang, 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 bang. And then, and then all of a sudden, three big explosions. About 50 consecutive bangs, and it went, fell down like a waterfall. And we heard the noise uh, associated with an implosion. We heard a very loud blast, an explosion. We looked up, and the uh, building literally began to collapse before us. We heard a loud explosion, and at that point, Building 2 was collapsing. At that point, we heard a large boom. Um, you know, I looked up and just saw the building coming at us. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like, it, to me, it sounded like an explosion. There was another major explosion. The, build, the building itself, literally the top of it, came down. All of a sudden, you hear an explosion, and you could see the building starting to collapse. Huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We understand now there has been a secondary explosion on Tower 2. According to the Associated Press, another building that has either been attacked or exploded. The tower, rather, that has collapsed, and we are told collapsed because of a third explosion. And about an hour later after that, there was a huge explosion at the base of the South Tower. That's the One World Trade Center, and part of the building collapsed. Uh, we could hear a rumble, which was uh, about five seconds long, preceding the actual collapse, and then a boom uh, when each of those towers collapsed. Uh, just seconds ago, there was a huge explosion, and it appears right now the second World Trade Tower has just collapsed. I was about five blocks away when I, I heard uh, explosions. And then you heard from far away, boom, boom. And you heard the boom, 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 boom. 
Yeah. All by four, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if they had detonated. Yeah, you know, detonated. They were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. From the corner, boom, 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 boom. Just like 20 straight hits. And as the bombs were going, people just started running. And I sat there and watched a, a few of them explode. And it just started going pop. It just started going boom, 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 boom. And he goes, how fast? I go, like firecrackers. No second flight. It was a bomb. Bombing in another building, not second plane. That's a bomb. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. And I turned to Hesh. I, I said, this is it. We're dead. We're, we're not going to make it out of here.